It's always getting that thing ready. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Big time musky over there. Were you in the band, weren't you? No. Oh, but um, our thought... son was. Oh, your son, son Jeff okay. was That's what in the husky marching band. Yeah. Nice. Oh, neat. That's Here's cool. Bob. What did he play? Drums. Drums. Yeah. It's percussion. Yeah, football's kicking off. I think this Thursday, yeah. college football anyway. So it's definitely the one thing I don't, well, I shouldn't say the one thing I like about fall, but candy's good too. All right, well let's uh, <laughs> let's jump in here, and we'll we'll start with Matthew, or excuse me, with Mark seven, and we're going to read one one through twenty three. There's a lot of skipping through, but we're going to read <clears throat> read through the chapter because I think there's some interesting things that kind of relate here. But Let's open with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, bless us who have gathered here. Bless all those uh, who are gathered with us remotely. And we pray that you would uh, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we hear your word, as we um, gather in community, and uh, that it would fill us to um, not only ponder and expand our minds and our connection with you, but also with our community. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Don't think anybody's, yeah, anybody's waiting here at this point, but let's share, share the screen. Okay. Okay, we're going to look at 1 through 23. So now, just so you know, the readings assigned are 1 through 8, and then it skips 9 through 13, and then goes 14 and 15, and then skips 16 to 20, and then goes 21 to 23. So um, again, we'll read, we'll read through that, but it'll be a little bit more than um, what we're going to get, <clears throat> what we're going to get for Sunday. So someone want to read? We can split it up. Anybody want to read one through eight? Okay. Now, when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as is written? This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain did he worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. Where did you want me to stop? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Depends. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. Okay. All right. Someone take on over from 9, maybe 9 through 15. I'll read 9 through 13 to show you why they left it out. Okay. <laughs> and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own condition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, mother, <laughs> he say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corbin, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do be. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll talk about that later. But um, 14 to 15. Who wants, who wants a short one? Okay. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile them. Okay. And then someone take us home here, 17 to 23. 
When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, um, then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer? This is very visual. Mm -hmm. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, it, it, uh, licentiousness, evil, evil, envy, slander, pride, <coughs> folly, all these things come from wind in and they defile a person. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get the part of, of him discussing with the disciples, but, um, and we don't get the part about declaring all foods clean, which I think is interesting. Mark goes very far in this in this text today. So anything standing out to you as you read this? It's kind of funny the way they describe it, mm -hmm. going into the body and coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right out in the visual. sewer. Yep, that's right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right, yeah. Well, no flushing in those days. Well, I don't know. Maybe there was. Maybe the Romans had that figured out. But but uh, yeah, <laughs> they're a little closer to that, maybe. But no. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Jesus is very um, earthy there, for mm -hmm. sure. Very yeah. down to earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Besides that, what stands out to you? <laughs> or to, if that, if you want to take that further, go ahead. So I I just have been curious, and I should have looked it up yesterday, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Um, there are a lot of purity laws in, um, you know, in the first five books, and mm -hmm. kind of you know washing is one of them. But mm -hmm. is there really no washing your hands or your pots or anything like that in Levitical law? Is that really just a tradition? Um, no, I mean, if we go to, um, uh, let's see here, go back, whoops, go back to there. If we go to Exodus 30, um, actually, you know what? I can do it probably right here. Um, if I have this right, I may not, oh my gosh, see, I can't get around this darn preparing live stream thing now. Um, I think I can if I move this over here. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't get to the commentary. Okay, well, I'll just go to Exodus 30 then. Um, in Exodus 30, there's this whole thing about, <clears throat> excuse me, about washing uh, and being pure uh, that, that the priests needed to follow or they would die. So, um, and there's, you know, there's all this stuff. And again, I haven't been in the Exodus class, obviously, for a while, but as those who are in both classes know, there's been a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff about how to keep these, you know, particular vessels and wash them and things like that. And so, yeah, but you may be finding stuff now because I see you're looking as well. No, I'm just looking at Exodus. So, so this is as relates to the temple tool, mm -hmm. the vessels in the temple. Right. And or it, I mean, in the um, tent at this point. Yeah, right. Exactly. Was Jesus, the tabernacle. was Jesus saying then it's not, you don't, you don't do a bunch of stuff yeah. to earn salvation. It, it comes in a different way. It's not all this stuff that you do I, is he saying something like that yeah i i think so i think it's less concerned maybe with salvation than with um um and it with uh yeah how we practice our how we practice our faith uh how we practice and, and what what really uh accounts for purity um and this is not talking about sickness and illness and things like that you know it's it's interesting yesterday one of our staff i think it was jessica or one of our staff members was like yeah, just like with post COVID and all that kind of stuff, you know, all the hand washing and yeah. actually the hand washing and sanitizing didn't end up being as big of an issue. Uh, but, uh, you know, the protection and the, all this kind yeah. of stuff. I just saw something this morning from a young person, former youth here, who's got a lot of 
you know, is immunosuppressed. And so, um, and she's was supporting, you know, masking of all healthcare workers yeah. when they, when they deal with patients. So she's like, my doctor coughed on me the other day and she said, it's just like, you know, don't know what he's, what he's given to me, but, but um, it's not talking about illness. It's not talking about, you know, germs and things like that. And I think people can get caught up in, in that part, but it is talking about, you know, what is, what it is to be, to practice purity and to follow the law and to, um, and those kinds of things. And Jesus changes that from being hand washing and vessel washing and these kind of ritual sort of things to more of a sense of coming from the heart. That's, that's like yeah. I was kind of thinking back when I was a Catholic and all the things uh -huh. that I, all the little ritual things I yeah. was supposed to do yeah. Yeah. to be holy. Right. You know, right. I mean, that's kind of what I was told. Yeah. I had to wear a covering on my head and all yeah. kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And back then, I don't know if they still do. Yeah, depends. But it mm -hmm. kind of reminded me of that. These are all the things you do to show your, to show right. your true religion. Right. And that doesn't come from that. It comes from inside us. Right. That's what right. I'm getting. Yeah. No, and I think that's definitely there. It's, and it's not... Um, yeah, and I think I think those things when those things become these sort of half dos and they become the focus of attention. I mean, and realize too, we're in chapter seven. You know what happened in chapter six? We're talking about eating, we're talking about washing our hands before yeah, we eat. It's one of the multiplication miracles. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Jesus fed five thousand people, and they're worried about the disciples washing their hands. Yeah, yeah. So now, and I don't want to you know oversimplify this because these purity laws were very important for. So there's two things going on here. The purity laws are very important because they are a sign. And, and again, we got to this in Exodus. They are a sign of, of kind of the, the care uh, and, and drawing things, all things into God's creative intention. So, you know, the people are out there in the wilderness and there's chaos all around them and they come into the tabernacle. And this is a place where they are, you know, they are drawn into uh, a holy place that's not just supposed to be a protected place. But it's a, it's 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 a sign of what God's intention is for all creation of bringing order out of chaos, um, bringing peace, bringing wholeness, bringing shalom. All of it is a sign of that. So this isn't some kind of just, um, you know, I, I think as Christians, sometimes we can just say, oh, well, these are just these silly little rituals, you know, kind of. I know you're not saying that, but but they're just these silly little. Well, but they have a purpose. Yeah. And and so do the things you know that you may have practiced. But what is their purpose? Is it just like oh I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do this, or is it this is a way in which I show, you know, yeah. uh, my my faith kind of a thing. So rather than a list of things that you better better do or else, yeah. they become so outward signs of of what's in the heart as well. So even you know Jesus isn't going to say you know nobody ever wash your hands again then he's just doing the same thing right but it, but what he's saying is these are not the necessary things and the outpouring of love and the outpouring of feeding the people is what matters <laughs> not that they wash their hands or that the disciples wash their hands now or that kind of thing but it it it's you got to have some as you said yesterday you got to have a little bit of of uh, sympathy for the Pharisees and the scribes who are who are saying wait a second this is this is the this is what we practice um and they probably saw this tradition of the elders this the talmud and the these things that were trying to flesh out the, this law into everyday life they were taking these these big laws from god these commandments and saying well how does that translate them into this part of life and 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 so they saw that as kind of having some equality with scriptures. The Sadducees did not. The Sadducees were very scripturally conservative. They they rejected it. That's why they reject the resurrection because it's not explicitly in, in scripture and in the scripture in the Old Testament. So the Talmud and, and these other kind of extra biblical writings, the Sadducees rejected. Um, they were very conservative kind of, I don't know if I call them biblical little or literalists, but to a certain extent they were whereas the Pharisees were, were interpreters and scribes were interpreting the law and trying to flesh it out. So, and that may be like, well, uh, ivory tower, I don't care. But that's where they're coming from, <laughs> to give some context. Well, I think his illustration in verses 9 through 13 are probably the most useful. Mm -hmm. And because both of these are 
actual, like one of them is in the Ten Commandments, honor your father and mother. And Jesus is never going to say the Ten Commandments are important. No. Um, and also we are to give to God, you know, Corbin, we're supposed to, you know, tithe or, um, you know, give money to the church to help the poor or whatever. So he's not saying those for, and that's unimportant too, but he says, look at why you're doing these things. You know, you're not going to let your parents go hungry just to give money to the church. That's not the proper order of right. doing right. things. And yeah. so I'd rather have you take care of your parents, mm -hmm. which is a heart thing, mm -hmm. rather than give this money to the church. Right, right. Yeah, and he, yeah, and they they had created this this Corbin, this offering to God as a way of, it was sort of a loophole, almost like a tax loophole. It was a loophole to kind of get out of taking care of your of your parents. Like, you know, this may be the time to take care of them. Well, this is going to eventually be an offering to God, or maybe now it's going to be an offering to God. So they they would get out of, of that sort of thing. Um, yeah, exactly. So he's giving this kind of example. And it's like, well, how does, what does that have to do with washing your hands? Well, it doesn't. But directly it the but right it's place. but it puts the law in the right place yeah. he's given this is an example of where you where you are where your human your human law your human interpretation has has violated or eclipsed the law of god and the law of god is primary here so yeah yeah um luke deals with this a bit it deals with a lot, a lot more in Acts when Peter um, has this vision of mm -hmm. the, the blanket of food coming down. Um, sorry, I'm getting down into um, into 19, 18 and 19 in that section, but where the cloth comes down and there are all these unclean animals, according to Jewish law, and Peter says, I, I can't eat that. God says, hey, I declared this clean. You know, I made this. Don't declare it unclean. Which is a really interesting scene because, again, the hand washing, all that kind of stuff is to draw all things into God's vision of creation. It's part of that, that the washing, the, the cleansing of hands and feet for the priests and, and then for all the people as well. Um, when God does that, God is saying, look, all everything you're saying, stuff I've created isn't clean. How do you how do you live out this create this vision of the beauty of creation and call things that I've made unclean or unworthy of eating or that kind of thing. But, but that's where Luke kind of opens up where all food is, is clean. Luke does not do that in the gospel of Luke. He does that in acts later, but, but, um, but Paul challenges this with the Jerusalem church because, you know, they, you can eat with the, they, they kind of get to where you can eat with the uncircumcised, but they have to obey certain food laws in order for us to eat with them. And all these these barriers get put up again and again. And um, Paul challenges that and pushes back against it. Peter resists. Peter's one of the ones who resists him before Peter has this, this vision of God declaring all things clean and then bringing him Gentiles who, um, who are baptized. And then the Jerusalem church kind of challenges Peter. Hey, why were you doing that? And so this thing starts to break open uh, a, a bit. All of this kind of looks at how Jesus is challenging um, these things that are going to be barriers or create a church that just kind of looks like what came before it. Um, and that's not a, a hit on the Jewish faith so much as it is if these are the ways in which we, if these are the, if these are the ultimate things, these, these kind of you better cover your head or you better light this candle or you better wash in this way or you better do this then um, it's going to create, you know, this group that's in and then all these groups, this, this group that's out and, and Jesus just won't allow that to happen. <laughs> um, that's one sense of this anyway. So, yeah. But, but yeah, Mark goes here to say in parentheses, but still says it, thus he declared all foods clean. That's radical statement <laughs> in here. Um, it also probably speaks to Mark's community and, and, uh, that Mark puts that in there, you know, interprets that. I mean, in, in a sense, it's an interpretive move on Mark's, he's not quoting Jesus. He's just saying, well, when he said this, he was declaring all foods clean. Um, 
you know, Mark, Mark joins his community and removes the barrier for them in doing that, um, which is really interesting, yeah. actually. Won't be part of our text this week, but but very interesting. Yeah, it's kind of sad that it's not because I think it's really helpful. Yeah, I do too. Uh, yeah. I, it's interesting that our English puts parentheses around that. I figure how the Greek, how yeah, they interpret true. this, true. you know, how they interpreted that. But. Yeah, yeah. There's no, no parentheses in this one. No, no, right. Yeah. And there wouldn't be an I don't think parentheses are exist in Greek. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But my mine also has parentheses around the uh, traditions that it expands like the traditions of washing cups and pots of copper vessels and dining yeah. cages. Is that in yours? Is it yeah, it does it does in mine too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's to be descriptive. And it's interesting because, again, for Mark, that signals to us, Mark's talking to people who don't understand all this all this washing and purity and that kind of thing. And it doesn't seem, at least in here, um, that Mark is judging those things. It's just, that's just part of the practice. This is really reassuring. I don't need to wash my frying pan every day. I yeah. can reuse it. No, no, you should just, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's, I use a cast iron skillet quite a bit, and it's always, my wife's always looked like, really, you don't use soap in it at all. Tell me, can't use soap in a cast iron pan. Yeah, just scrub it out, no matter what goes in there. Is yeah. it cast iron? Yeah, it's cast iron. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So, so yeah. yeah, you're old school. Yeah, that's the old school way, I guess. Yeah, I want to get all those flavors in there. Yeah. Cast iron frying pans. I still use them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I like them. Great for spaghetti sauce and things to get the iron out of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. And, and, but Jesus seems very, you know, he, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but you with defiled hands? And he says, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. Wow. He's really putting a, um, I mean, this is, this is like pre-exilic condemnation of the, of the people for, and the leaders, especially for not walking in God's ways, but in their own ways, relying on their own strength and, and that kind of thing. So Jesus really responds quite powerfully to this. Um, but we don't get a response from uh, from the folks who have come uh, either. Uh, we just get their question. So, yeah. Yeah, kind of interesting. And then Jesus goes on this um not tirade, but this, uh, yeah, this kind of monologue here. And even as a little bit on his disciples, you also don't understand. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but, but he is specific on some things that do come from the human heart and do, um, and names those as evil. So it isn't sort of like, now we're just in a boundaryless world. You know, all the things are gone. It doesn't matter what you do, right? It's it's short of that. So um, Jesus is specific about the things that exclude, but then he's also specific about the evil things that exclude or that hurt or that defile or that um, cause harm or injury or that kind of thing. The thing, these things that come out of the heart and names those as well. It's very, it's kind of like, you, you get this a lot with Paul where he makes kind of these, these sort of lists. And that was typical on that day of making kind of, a list of, of, you know, these are the things to seek, or these are like the fruits of the spirit, or these are the things to avoid, or whatever it might be. Um, but none of these have to do necessarily with a ritual kind of, kind of practice. Uh, uh, so Jesus dismisses <laughs> what's seen as, you know, the us and them defilement, pure and, and impure, but then also does talk about what is defiling and what is um, you know, part of that impurity and evil. Yeah. Okay. Other thoughts or things to discuss in this in our gospel for today. Just a quick clarification. Mm -hmm. The um, in the in the e news, mm -hmm. um, where it talked about the scripture for the Sunday and also in last Sunday's bulletin. It shows us going to verse 33, which doesn't really make sense. 
Oh yeah, that was sorry, that was a misprint. Yeah. Should have been 23. Yeah. Um yeah, it should have been 23. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. You don't get to talk about the, the dogs. No, no, it's one of right. it's it sounds weird probably, but it's one of my favorite favorite uh, texts is the Syrophoenician woman. Yeah. Um and titled well, I think the Syrophoenician woman woman's faith. So I preached on preached on this as a guest in my in-laws church years ago and uh luckily had my wife preview my sermon she said oh i don't know that you can say that <laughs> but it was it was i was kind of toying with the idea of you know the, the christ figure in, in that story being the woman and the and uh the you know jesus is without sin but it almost seems like he's the sinner and or the one in the wrong in this in that particular text. And so I wasn't saying that Jesus was sinning, and you know, but um, I think he's maybe setting things up. He's by illustration. What's that? Just by illustration. Just by illustration. Yeah, but but um, yeah. Anyway, that was gonna maybe be thin ice in that particular context. <laughs> so well, that makes an interesting sandwich with the yeah. with the PD miracle and this story if you want one. Uh, you know the two pieces of bread between this. It, it it does yeah 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 it yeah and it is it, 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 they almost they well I mean the whole gospel goes together but but they almost go together so you've got this feeding of the five thousand you've got this question to Jesus about what defiles why don't you wash your hands and this and the other kind of thing and um, I like this text by the way I just went backpacking this weekend with my kids and so I didn't wash my hands once. Um, no, that's not true. I did. I had some, I had some wipes I used once, but, uh, um, <laughs> but Hey, they're, they're cleaner with that dirt than they are touching my cell phone and this table and all those other kinds of things I, I would say, but, um, but yeah, then to have this kind of stuff on purity and then to go to where Jesus says this, this woman is a dog because she's a foreigner and the, and the, the word is, you know, the word in my mission is for the people of God. It's like, wait a second. Didn't you just say, up here that the purity had to do and it's what out, comes out of the heart what's coming out of your heart jesus but it's it, it almost seems like he's he's going okay did you guys learn anything mm -hmm. <laughs> um so and they're the ones that the disciples are the ones that are on him about the woman bothering them so clearly they didn't learn anything <laughs> in that particular sense it seems but jesus really in this text does kind of blow open the gates of of what, how it is that we um, uh, live out our faith, how it is that we connect, that kind of a thing. But also, um, you know, and I know Pastor Bill's going to talk about the law, this, you know, the purpose of the law. Uh, and, you know, the purpose of the law is, is to not to be used as a way to ladder up to God, but as, as something that puts us all on this you know, level playing field at the foot of the cross and um, and condemns. We can't live it out. You didn't do enough in your, you know, as a Catholic girl, young Catholic girl or whatever it might be. And that's certainly not unique to Catholics, but uh, Roman Catholics. But um, yeah, it isn't enough. The law doesn't get you there. The law doesn't save. Um, and so Jesus turns us uh, towards really relying on him. And and ultimately in this in this passage, that's that's what we get is that this is not about it isn't even about what Jesus says at the end. Okay, well, I didn't have, I wasn't sexually immoral, I didn't steal, I didn't murder, I didn't commit adultery or avarice. I don't even know what that is. Wickedness, deceit, debauchery, envy, slander, pride, and folly. Okay, I think I'm good. No, it's not even about that. It's not about hand washing, it's not about those kinds of things. Ultimately, is it is about um our righteousness in Christ, the, the, the righteousness that he gives us. Um, and then living out that faith um, is, is more of what, where, where Jesus is, is kind of focused here, but um, yeah. Other thoughts, comments? At some point it says that our righteousness is like filthy rags. Our righteousness, yeah, our human righteousness, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, what did you say? Our righteousness is like filthy rags. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't know where it's at. I've heard it when you're talking. I was thinking, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's a great connection because yes, right. And as we say, where we say sometimes, you know, the, the reason we wear those robes on Sunday is not to say, look at the pastors and the helpers, how righteous they are and, and that kind of thing, but that we are covered in Christ's righteousness. And so. the Old Testament is just all the rules. Yeah. And then I guess at some point they're shipping away of what really is important because yeah. the Gentiles are coming. They don't know anything about it. Right. So they've got to be able to make common ground. Yeah. And yeah. And it's hard. Right. When people only think, well, look how you're raised. Yeah. You know, yeah. Black, you do all those things so they could be in right stand. Yeah. And yeah. You just took that all away. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in, is it Galatians 5? Galatians 5, maybe, where it says that Christ is the cornerstone. So, and this is, this is essentially what Jesus is saying. Um, and this, I, I think this is probably why, you know, C.S. Lewis says, hey, Jesus, Jesus isn't just some good idea to follow. He's either insane, uh, he's a liar, or he's who he says he is. Because, you know, it's a, it's a, in our, you know, age of the cult of personality of, of the worshiping, oh, well, this leader is going to do it for us, or this, you know, star is is who i'm going to follow and i'm going to you know this and that and the other thing we look for all the gods we want you know the little gods or demigods we're going to worship jesus is saying you know this is this is through me <laughs> john will in john he'll say no one comes to the father except through me um and so we put we 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 put our the access comes through christ and not through us and that's that's really to me that's what what the, the the church hinges on of whether it will become an in and out, in, in and in out group and a bunch of you better do this or else, or whether it will become uh, a place that invites and draws people in, um, uh, is is that it it we rely on on what on how Christ is 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 um, sorry we rely on Christ's righteousness Christ's welcome Christ alone it all comes through Christ so. I, I'll say this probably as a broken record again, but um, we're called people of the book. Jews, Muslims, and Christians are all called people of the book, and and we're we're not. We're people of a person. We're people of Christ. Uh, that's where we stand. So the scriptures tell us that's that story. They bring Christ to us. They, the word is powerful, and it's to be revered and studied and and held as a treasure. But ultimately, our faith relies on Christ. So that's our cornerstone. And, I, and that's where Jesus is bringing this. <laughs> so sometimes I wish I were like a little fly on the wall back then. And I yeah. could say to him, Jesus, what was going on? Yeah. And he was just hanging out with his disciples. Yeah. And what did they talk about? And what, I just, I just want to know all that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, definitely. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's fun about watching the chosen. Yeah. Is because they, the people that wrote that yeah. course and produced it, you know, try to imagine what that was. Yeah. Jesus living cool. with his disciples. Is yeah. that, what is that? Is that a movie or a, what is that? A, it's, it's a series. series. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, they, they'll be, apparently, there's going to be eight well, seasons. Can you buy it? Four. Can you buy it separately? Um, you can, yes. You should get a part. But, I mean, through. Yeah. Through. <clears throat> I'll show you that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's like eight episodes in season one. I think there might be eight episodes in each season. That'd be, and you can that'd already, be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I think for free, you can already see up to three. Yeah. You can see three seasons for sure. And there's a fourth season now as well. And yeah, I didn't know they were going to do eight. I thought they were getting to the resurrection here in season four, but maybe they're going to do some early church stuff or something like that. I mean, they're, they're making too much money on the stretch. Of yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sure. That's I right. I to our cat and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's sure. right. Or perhaps it will be a Corbin. <laughs> yeah. I know a couple, or, or I know at least one Corbin. I think I met another one, but my son had a friend named Corbin. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, which offering to God, it's 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 a cool name in, yeah. in many ways, but it's not exactly seen as a positive here. Yeah, yeah. Again, although again, I don't think Jesus Jesus is slamming the tradition of, of giving offerings to God. Certainly, it's just it's just the the and and this kind of goes with with what we saw in um, 
in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew, of you know, redefining or defining what the commandments really mean with adultery and what they really mean with murder and and you know that this this hatred, this coming, this heart, this this um, condition of the heart, and that um, ultimately, I, I think Pastor Bill said it really well yesterday. How do you say it? He said something about how you know the ultimate. Um, uh, transformation the ultimate thing here is the transformation of, of christ transforming our hearts mm -hmm. so that what comes out of our hearts is uh what is good and pleasing to god and and faithful and fulfilling and connecting to our community um that that's the measure of of how we you know kind of how we look at this not where our allegiances are what we think about this or what we do ritually or that kind of thing as well so um I was thinking to, you know, Jesus doesn't quote the Old Testament verbatim very often. And yeah, that's true. So I thought, it, you know, what was going on in Isaiah at the time, you know, because that's, I mean, I think Pastor Bill said this many times that when he, you know, slips a verse in there, it's almost like shortcut to, you know, the number jumps like 23 and everybody would laugh, you know, because yeah. they know what 23 is or right. whatever. So this would be you know, something really familiar to them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but what's the connection between what was happening in Isaiah's time with what's happening now? Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's interesting because I think this is also, you know, um, the Pharisees are are trying to not be this this thing. And so maybe with some care or with some conviction or with both jesus is saying let me draw you back to this part very known part of your history i mean the 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 exile into babylon is what our my my hebrew scripture pro professors teachers called the the bushy squirrel or the the center of you know the, the whole there are a lot of the hebrew scriptures kind of rotate around like a hurricane rotating around and the eye of the storm is is the Babylonian exile. You know, one of one of the creation stories that we have that are kind of pushed together in Genesis 1 and 2 and 3 um, come from the Babylonian exile period. Um, I, I know I've talked about this before, but other kinds of things kind of rotate around um, what is this, what does this mean? Because it was such a huge event in their lives. And so to, for Jesus to draw back and say that you're honoring me with your lips, but not with your hearts, and they're and they're saying, wait, well, well, this is what we're trying to do. We're we're trying to be faithful to God so we can get rid of these Romans and get out of this situation and you know see the rule of David and the, the throne or the throne of David established again forever. That's what their desire is. Their desire is to be faithful to God. Like, I've seen too many depictions of the Pharisees as as you know the Keystone cops or the fumbling bumbling idiots or or hating God or something like that. That's that's so. I mean, disrespectful, if nothing else, they are trying to be faithful. And Jesus is saying, that's not it. <laughs> the Messiah has come. The kingdom of God has come near you. And this is what it looks like. Um, so, but to crack through that wall is very, very difficult. And there, there are cases where it happens that we see there are the Nicodemuses and there are some other, you know, kind of, kind of folks in here, it seems, but, um, but it's tough. To get through that but it's not that they don't aren't that they don't want that they are they're just it's exactly what they desire and jesus is just showing that here it is and giving it to you but um but it's in many cases it comes in such contrast with what they think is the way to be faithful to god so yeah i'd like to be a fly on the wall too or a person there yeah. or that kind of thing or a time traveler or whatever it might be but man, if it was coming at me in that time and in my profession, even I might not see it. Yeah. I have to, I have to acknowledge that, um, that kind of empathy with these, with these religious leaders, at least. So, yeah, you all would. But... Did you find Isaiah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Isaiah twenty nine, thirteen. Mm -hmm. Where it starts. You want this quote? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. 
interesting. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Those go on. That's, that's the gist of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, Jesus saying that these are hum human rules or man made rules is, again, very like maybe that's why they don't speak because they're just going, you know, <laughs> how could you say this? This is, this is pretty, pretty radical. Um, uh, that's not how they would see them. They would see them as holding equal with, with scripture, uh, this, this interpretation. So it's, uh, it's harsh from Jesus for sure, but, well, it was, but loving as well. It was harsh at the time though, too, with Isaiah, because this was, it, sure. Isaiah was warning them that this is what's, you're, you're going to go into exile because you're not yeah. worshiping God properly. You're not mm -hmm. loving God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Properly, even though you're, even though you're doing all of these ritual things, your yeah. hearts aren't in it. Yeah. And it's so bad that I'm going to take you out of, yeah. out of Jerusalem right. and send you to Babylon. Yeah. yeah. Which, which, what's, what comes after that part then? What does come after that? Is it there a therefore they will? Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Therefore, mm -hmm. once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, to do their work in darkness and think, who sees us? Who will know? Okay. Yeah, good. So, interestingly enough, Jesus does stop there. He And maybe it's just to be a reminder, because they'll know. The rest of that text. It's like shortcut. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of like right. a shortcut. It's a shortcut. Yes, it's like, like 23. Story. Right, right. Yeah. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, in Joel, in Joel, you have the great and terrible day of the Lord. And then when it's, when Jesus, I don't know if Jesus quotes it, but the great and glorious day of the Lord you have in the New Testament, right? Jesus, there isn't, there isn't a, therefore I will send you into exile. Therefore, the therefore comes with this story. Therefore, I will take upon I take the sin upon myself and I will die and I will crush it and I will destroy it and I will give you life. And that's a message to the people who hear. And I think that's a message to the Pharisees. And I think that's the message to the scribes as well. It certainly is when he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. I mean, and that's, that's when you know the end, it's very powerful to see that Jesus stopped short of this this isn't this isn't what happens now with this. What happens now come falls on me, not on you, and that's um, that's powerful. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, cool. So we are also. What else are we doing? We're doing the first. I I just studied the gospel, so I think we're doing. James, I know we're doing James. James yeah. Chapter. Yeah. Is it just James? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's look at James. We should look at James because Luther called James straw and oh, thought both James. Yeah. He thought both James and Revelation were straw. Straw? Straw. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, uh, yeah. What did he mean? <laughs> he meant that they didn't have a lot of use, that they, he, did, he wasn't in favor of burning the Bible. Let's stop short of that. But he saw, kind of saw them as sort of fuel for the fire. Oh. As not now, now in in Luther's time, I I think there was not a lot of you know understanding of the context of Revelation, so as there is now. But um, I think Luther might appreciate the book of Revelation a lot more now. But James is filled with you know what to do, <laughs> and I think at the time when Luther was pushing back against a church that was all about what to do and you better do this and you, yeah. and, you know this is how you get out of there and this is how you help your relative out of that and indulgences yeah james came at him as a offense that was the only one he couldn't work with yeah 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 <laughs> right and in, <laughs> inconvenient <laughs> yeah yep it's a fair point so james 1 17 to 27 <laughs> someone want to read those 11 verses here. Oh yeah, the father of lights. This is a fun one. I can. Okay, go for it. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of the heavenly lights, 
who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. <laughs> but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what are you pulling out of this? Quick to listen, slow to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a definite. Uh, they probably something to call it a meme coming out of this, but that's, that's certainly a. What do you call those things? An idiom or a saying or a. That's what you call. I got a yeah. new. I got a new favorite saying. That yeah. I just came up with or read somewhere recently. Yeah. So don't believe everything you think. Yeah. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've seen that. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Don't believe everything you think. I like that. Uh, my favorite T-shirt at my cousin's reunion that my friend that my cousin had on was that sounds like a terrible idea. What time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what do you what are you drawing out of this? There's a lot of humbling, mm -hmm. humbling, and I think mm -hmm. I've never heard anybody give any praise to the Pharisees for their work. Like mm -hmm. he did, and I was that they were just so prideful. Yeah, and they were so up here. Yeah, but um, it just that I don't know makes sense. Humbling, humbling yeah. is a lot and changing. Mm -hmm. You have to give up a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's a heart. Yeah. You know, your heart. So, yeah. Gotta be something that, you know, I think, well, what about all of them that were trying so hard and died without faith? Yeah. But for some reason, nothing hurt their heart. Yeah. 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 So, if we're really chosen, that are yeah. kind of that's like, yeah. I feel like I'm glad, but you know, what about those that don't? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We place them in the hands of God, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. God's mercy for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is it James that says faith without works is dead? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What he doesn't say is faith without works sends you to hell, or mm -hmm. you know something like that. But it's right. but yeah, there is something to be said for well, and and I mean, and Luther was couldn't. I don't know if it's naively or not. I've kind of been heard it that way, but but for lack of a better term, naively was sort of like, how do you not have it, you know, do these works with when you have this gift? How could you possibly not? You know, but you know, there are plenty of kids who receive everything from their parents and then, you know, talk about how horrible their parents are, or talk about how horrible their life is, or talk about, you know, so we as God's children. And respond in different ways with, with hard heartedness or with humility, right? Well, Luther was really clear that we're free in Christ to serve our neighbor, right? So that was always, you know, mm -hmm. that part of works was always important to him, yeah. but it flows from right, right, Christ, yeah, you know? right. The order is imminent or is, is uh, yeah. 
So Christ the first, person. and then what we do, yeah. rather than what we do, makes Brings us to Christ. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Christ. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We'll certainly see Christ in, in those in those actions or those things, but but it doesn't get us closer or that kind of thing. We can't be closer to Christ, you know, kind of a thing, because then we're constantly measuring. We're constantly, is this enough or is this is this right or is this, yeah, kind of a thing, yeah. I think verse 20 is interesting. And I mean, maybe I'm taking it out of the larger letter. I don't know, but the anger and it's not produced the righteousness of God. I think we're so, especially in the political world today, we have this, you know, people have this righteous indignation, like they're so angry about what other people have done and what other people are doing. And they think that they're empowered by God to have this anger. You know, they're mm -hmm. empowered by God, yeah. by God's law to have this anger. And so it's okay because it's because I'm trying to, mm -hmm. I'm trying to um, be true to what God's telling me. Right. You know, and so hellfire and big stone. And that's not, it's it's just like what the Pharisees were doing. That is not mm -hmm. going to bring, that's not what brings righteousness. No, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. Now there are things to be angry about and upset about, certainly, but, but, um, uh, yeah. And this, this is a definitely. I don't know when I when I'm confronted with something that's difficult or is is um, frustrating or it's that kind of thing. My instant is anger. Yeah. My daughter's that way too. She's like me in that way, and it's it, it's interesting because sometimes she, she'll do that, and I'll be like, I'll jump on it. Like we all do, you know, some our kids do something like like us, and we, especially if it's something maybe we don't even especially like in ourselves, we'll jump on it to try to you know sort of beat it out. But um, <clears throat> um, yeah, and it, and especially confronted with something that doesn't have an answer, or doesn't have a blame, or doesn't have a whatever, I'm jumped to anger right away, um, kind of thing. And a lot of times it'll be internal; it won't be that I'm jumping all over people or throwing punches, but 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 simply just getting this this fire inside. Um and some people jump right to my wife's more of a jump right to, oh, okay, this is new, this is a new reality. How do we fix this? Or how do we live into this new reality? Her dad's like that, you know. Um, but mm -hmm. but it's interesting. So it's it's a confronting, it's personally a confronting text, at least for me, in that way that this Okay, the anger isn't solving anything, right? Kind of a thing. And it's okay to have that anger, but but how does that produce something that's or what's on the other side of that or where is that coming from that we can get at the root of that? Yeah. And to actually be a little more more solution focused. So there's some practicality to this, I, I guess. Well, and he's helpful when he says that religion that is pure and undefiled before God is to visit orphans and widows yeah. and right. to keep oneself in stain. So I mean, that's what always made God angry in the mm -hmm. First Testament was injustice and improper worship. Mm -hmm. And those are the things we should be angry about. And so what we do is we try to work to correct that we don't just sit there and stay angry. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying Karen does, right? That she... Yeah, uh, she'll just instantly go to the solution mm -hmm. kind of yeah. thing and skip the, skip the jumping up and down and pounding on the wall kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I sometimes thought that was more, maybe more of a guy, you know, a little bit of a difference between men and women. And maybe it is statistically more one way or the other, but it's opposite in my kids. <laughs> my son is more like Karen and my daughter is more like, more like I am. So, but yeah, the widow, the orphan, the foreigner in your, in your land, the, the prophetic word, um, uh, the measure of, of a successful society versus other kinds of things. Uh, and that really connects with our gospel, certainly as well. That, um, and I, I think it's it's really important here too. That um, where was it? Uh, go, 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 go. <sighs> I didn't think where it's it's kind of just basically says it's not on you. Uh, let's see.
<laughs> Not seeing it now. Read the whole thing here in this awkward silence. Um, yeah, but it's it seems to be communicating. Maybe I was just interpreting, but it seems to be communicating that uh, we do we come through. Um, we come. Oh, here it is. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth and wickedness and welcome with meekness and the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. So what is it that saves your soul is, is the power of God's word implanted within you. Um, and I think that gets at that transformation of the heart uh, as well. I know now where Pastor Bill yesterday when he said the man in the mirror, you know, look, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And he was I'm sure thinking of James as well, but we were just reading Mark, um, but talking about how <clears throat> looking at that and saying, okay, now I'm going to change. I'm going to be all these good things. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Misses the fact that really what saves us is, is, is Christ and that, and that word of Christ, that promise that we have from God uh, through Christ, kind of what we got to with the gospel lesson of Christ taking it on. Um, yeah. Okay. Other thoughts on this particular text? We'll look at our Old Testament one as well here, even though it's not in our, our purview for Sunday. I don't think it is anyway, right? Uh, not, I don't just have so. two texts. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. Two. Yeah. I was initially going to be gone during this time, so I've been not paying attention to my bulletins and whatnot. But I did hear that I need to go listen to the sermon from Sunday. So I'm going to have to do that. Uh, as well. Okay. She did, a, she did a really nice job. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad she got a chance to do that. So I even have a little glass of water at home that I can use. Remember, she had a single meal, and I had a little drink for myself to bless myself in the morning and at night. A blessing. I, yeah. She had a little. She had a little shell of water. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's a neat idea. So I made a little one for myself. So when I get up in the morning and when I go to bed at night, I can make the cross on my shoulder. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. 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 That's cool. I, I can't wait. I guess they didn't get the 10 30, and my wife is at the 10 30. She did that perfect during the children's. So that was part of the children's, children's sermon. sermon. Nice. Yeah. yeah the kids perfect. went through the audience and everybody a, a blessing yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh super cool i love that yeah so great when their hands can okay. be active in that way you know and and i love that you said that because as we look at all these these texts that we've looked at again these this transformation of the heart then all all of these things that we do you know become this joy this response of joy versus this checklist of or this uncertainty or this anxiety, they, they're they freed from that. Um, you know, perfect love casts out fear is kind of what, what Jesus is offering us and James are offering us here. So kind of cool in that way. <clears throat> All right, Deuteronomy 4, let me read this here. So now Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe so that you may live, oh, sorry, are we getting there? I'll wait for people to turn, sorry, Deuteronomy 4. Let me pause. We're reading one to two. But you know what? Why are we just doing that? Let's go. Just let's do. Let's just do the whole deal. All right. Deuteronomy what? Deuteronomy four. Oops. Deuteronomy. Four. Okay. Yeah, four, and it'll be one to something here. And what are the verses? It'll be one to. Um, just a second here. Uh, sorry. Uh, one to nine. Maybe we'll run into something terribly offensive in the skipped verses. So it's in, it's given as one to four and or one to two and six to nine, but I want to look at the whole thing. So why not here, right? So now Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I'm teaching you to observe so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You have seen for yourselves that the Lord did, did with what the Lord did with regard to the Baal of Peor, how the Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor, while those 
of you who held fast to the Lord your God are all alive today. See, just as the Lord my God has charged me, I now teach you statutes and ordinances for you to observe in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. You must observe them and perform them, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. It's interesting they stop there. <laughs> Yes. All right. So we've had in Deuteronomy, I'm trying to think here, three, what happens there? I don't remember well enough to the defeat of the king of Og. Yeah. Okay. Keep these words that I'm commanding you today in your hearts and in your minds to hear in another place. Yeah. Well, what do you hear here? What is God's word revealing to you here? <laughs> You're supposed to do all the stuff Jesus said you didn't have to do. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> I know that's kind of what it sounds like, right? Yeah, I think probably the point, and maybe why they stop at two, is because um, uh, you must neither add anything to what I command you nor take anything away from it. So. Um, I think that's probably the reference and why this is connected to what Jesus is saying in Mark is that um, these are the commandments God has given you. And now you're putting on these ordinances of men or ordinances of, of human beings. And uh, um, Jesus is kind of cutting that, cutting away at that um, a bit. Uh, although I don't think he's necessarily saying it's all bad in it within itself. It's just that it is not the focus. So, yeah. And there may be something in this, I don't know, in all of this, I've just been wondering, as even as we were reading our gospel, maybe there's something in this that, you know, we talked about, I know, in the Exodus class, how these commands, okay, well, what does that mean here? What does that mean here? What does that mean here? And maybe there is to be some um, uh, I don't know what to call it, not ambiguity necessarily, but some some flexibility in the, in that law as far as <clears throat> the um the more we try to hone it down and say well then this applies to this situation so it applies to this situation in all situations but to um for the law to translate and to be um yeah i don't know again i don't want to water it down but but where it gets to the point where the law becomes flexible enough that we can say in this situation where it is, it is good and right. And in this situation, it means something that it does in this situation or the, you know, we've talked about how, you know, obviously there weren't cars at this time. So what does that have to do with, you know, <laughs> how I drive or, or this or that, or the other kind of thing, but that the law becomes um, translatable uh, into different situations uh, without being dismissed. Because I think that's what happens sometimes is we either get into this, or we have to follow this exactly like this, you know, this very stringent or, um, well, it was only applied to that day. So now, now it's just totally thrown out the door. I think we kind of sometimes fall into either one of those ditches. I think so, a lot of Christians do that with the Old Testament. They yeah. say, well, it's just not relevant. Yeah. Relevant anymore. Right. So it's just like or they obsess about it. Yeah. 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 That happens. That yeah. happens too. That happens too. Yeah. I used to kind of watch television preaching as almost as almost a you know uh, a sport, <laughs> not a sport, but an interactive sort of thing. Speaking of anger, and I, and I would get all you know out of sorts for stuff. But I I remember a lot of times it was like two verses from the Old Testament, and then they preach for forty five minutes on these two verses in the Old Testament. I think, okay, yeah, maybe he said. Wait, yeah. aren't you supposed to use scripture to interpret scripture? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah, right. And it would just go on and on about about kind of what I think they it felt like what they wanted to say versus versus that kind of um, but again, that was a, a pretty judgmental eye on that. But but yeah, I think it can kind of go either way of this obsessiveness about it. Well, oh, we better we better get righteous. 
We better be this. We better be that. We better show the world who we are. What's interesting about this too is that, you know, God anticipates, maybe this is naive, I don't know, but God anticipates that nations will, will be, wow, look at the wisdom, the discernment of these people. This, this is a great nation, so wise, so discerning. What, what nation has a God like this that comes whenever we call to him? It has these statutes and ordinances uh, that are like this. So God actually anticipates that uh, the gift that God has given to the nation will be this blessed to be a blessing, glorious kind of thing, um, which is kind of interesting to, to, to see that that's, that's how this is set, set up and established. Um, and that does sound more, much more like a gift than a you better, you better, you better, you better, you better, uh, kind of a kind of a thing that God's vision of it becomes um, a, a beautiful thing to live out, a beautiful community rather than, um, you know, uh, a set of barriers for the in-group and the out-group. That's just what the Israelites did, right? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding. Yeah, people. yeah, absolutely. Just yeah, like I messed up a few times. I messed up a couple times. Yeah, just a couple of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think God's being ironic here, you know, or or setting them up or that kind of thing. But um, that it is truly, it is truly beautiful to live under God's law. Um, but again, what are we centered in to live that out? becomes that becomes the question because it isn't going to save us um, but it is a gift nonetheless and i think that's kind of something we hold together <clears throat> well and the things that he's concerned about i mean i'm just spinning this but you know the first mm -hmm. is about how, you know who are you going to worship so yeah it's always the idolatry <laughs> is he's going to be upset about that and then are you going on from this text, yeah you mean? i'm just yeah. saying what's he concerned about here mm -hmm. so he's um you know don't add to the word that i command you or take from it that you may keep the commandments and so here's giving the commandments the first is you know i don't be idolatrous you know worship me he gives them the ten commandments again yeah. And then he right. gives the greatest commandment, which Jesus then does too in chapter six, where he says, you know, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your body. Mm -hmm. So he's pretty clear about what that means. Yeah. Didn't they add to the, uh, they show a fair close witness against thy neighbor? What do you mean? Well, they, I mean, they, we and the, the Jewish commentators, does that mean um, don't lie? Mm -hmm. Period. Right. Not not in not in the context that he says don't bear false you know, right. in, in a trial sin. Yeah, yeah. So it becomes becomes defined in a more limited way. Is that what you're saying? Or yeah, they, well they they added stuff that, that wasn't there. My God. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and the, you know the Jews did that for for everything. Sure. Sure. They, They're trying to figure out how this how yeah, this works how in this situation in, in all yeah. the situations. Yeah. Well, and you know, people come to the judges and say, "Hey, this happened. What did you know? What's what? Are, what do the commandments say to this?" Yeah, and then it's like, "Okay, well, you know, this, that, or the other thing." But, but there, are, then there are these places where it becomes kind of convenient as well, right? We see that in our own lives today, where um, I go back to this again and again, but it, I lo love hated the story, I guess, but where this pastor goes in with this parishioner and. This neighbor had taken him to court, you know, over this petty thing, and the judge basically said, you know, I have to, I have to rule in the favor of, of the neighbor. And the pastor stands up and he goes, "Where's the justice?" And he goes, "This, this isn't the court of justice. This is the court of law." And the law says, you know, the letter of the law says he's right, kind of a thing. So, yeah, uh, if we have to stand in a court of law, done. <laughs> but we stand in a, you know, in a court of, of justice covered in Christ. So, yeah, but yeah, and that law can be convenient for us, for the people who are translating it, and it can be, um, it can add or detract from what God's truly saying. Yeah, yeah, and that's a clear warning against that here in Deuteronomy 4. 
other thoughts, insights that you're seeing here? I don't know who the Baal of Peor is. I'd have to look that up. But uh, <laughs> apparently it wasn't a good idea to worship that guy. Yeah, that false god. So. I think I like, um, well, being a parent of six, mm -hmm. I have a favorite description. I know that it's Old Testament, but I love mm -hmm. what she had said that it was to love the Lord God with all your heart. And then it says, oh, these commandments that I've given to you today are to be upon your hearts and press them on your children, on your children. Talk about them. This is my favorite because I, I really held yeah. close to that. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. They're just sort of a nice commandment. Yeah. So yeah. The sim simplicity of that mm -hmm. commandment, not anything else. Right. And it really yeah. helped me a long time. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't do it perfectly all the time. No. Course. What an impression. Like yeah. You said hanging out with your kids. I'm sure mm -hmm. those moments and you know how yeah. we can make that impression. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. like in the synagogue, it's in your home. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I just love that scripture. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking it even though it's Old Testament. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, well, it. no, but that's beautiful. But that that's and and the Old Testament has plenty of gospel in it. There have been a few times it's I, where I kind of almost chuckle to myself because we'll have an, a New Testament reading or a word from Jesus that's pretty harsh. You know, he's 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 speaking the law, and then we'll have this beautiful Old Testament passage of the promise to Abraham and Sarah or something like that. And so the gospel actually, we're hearing it through. Uh, you know, we say the gospel of our Lord that praise to your Christ, but we're hearing the gospel. Um, with a small g anyway mm -hmm. in in the old testament reading so mm -hmm. so yeah and i i think without a good understanding of the old testament the new testament doesn't have as much depth we've been just, it's, we've, all under it's, part, it's part of what we discover in this in this time together for sure yeah yeah i love that yeah i love the um i just i love the science that goes along with that too when you lie down um, and we know that our brain works more now because we can st we can see those electromagnetic impulses that our brain does, does the unraveling of the day during the night. And so the last thing to go into your brain at night is, is what your brain oftentimes will work on. If you've had a big problem or something you can't figure out during the day, your brain will work on that too. But to have scripture, go into your brain with that. Or the last thing that goes in is just a wonderful thing. And then to wake up with it in the morning and have scripture, you know, kind of start your day is a beautiful thing. What a, what a cool thing it would be as parents to, have your kids make your lunch, make their lunches, and 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 for you to be, you know, figuring out like what's going to be the opening scripture of, for us today, or all that kind of thing. I mean, you can pick it up right there. Anyway, it's sitting sitting right there and in, in print, and you can find a thousand on, online as well. Um, you can read through the Bible. You can do all kinds of things, and it can be a joy and a gift. Yeah, and again, seeing it that way as a joy, seeing it that way as a gift is really really where that comes from yeah Luther was really big on that yeah Luther morning evening prayers and then yeah. like the gift of you know being able to cross yourself about water for sitting it yeah. means yeah. a lot awesome. to me I, I yeah. yeah 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 the table talks kind of the you know a little little water with them making the cross on my forehead mm -hmm. like she had the yeah. kids there. yeah yeah cool. well this statement this is the shema right the um Israel, the Are Lord, you at six four? Our God, yeah, the yeah. Lord is one. You shall love the Lord with all your heart and all your heart. Yeah. So that, and then it says, put this on the doorposts and between your eyes. I mean, this was so big for the Jewish people. So the mezuzah would have these words on it, you yeah. know, that are on the doorposts, and they touch them going into their house. And mm -hmm. um, they had those little luxury hats that had these words on them, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. the ropes on their hands, and so. These were just reminders of that word every time yeah. you know you touch the doorpost and it's like yeah. love the Lord your God with all your heart. So it's just a nice reminder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My uh, Hebrew language, one of my Hebrew, well, no, she was my Hebrew language teacher, and then her husband was uh was the um about the smartest people as a couple, theological power couple. Anyway, but he was a uh, one of my systematics teachers. Um, I didn't like him as well because he was really into books. 
really like to assign like 1200 pages of, of oh. heavy theological reading kind of stuff but <laughs> i loved him in every other way except that but uh but they had they had their their they kept that in, in their um door they would have and they would touch that so if you um uh, went to their house you would you know you could you could touch that piece and it was a reminder yeah, they, they held on to that and kept that because it is, it's a beautiful gospel promise piece that God gives us um, and uh, um, certainly can be a part of our, our practice as well. So, um, and it reminds of the Passover. I mean, there's just all kinds of ways in which it's, it's, it's beautiful. But yeah, recite them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. So, yeah. I'm not going to wear phylacteries, but uh, I think that's kind of a whole practice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Deuteronomy is a beautiful book. Place. But there's some parts in it, if you're having trouble sleeping, that you could read too. About food, food laws and all kinds of intricate things. Yeah. All right. Anything else that we want to, or do we want a few minutes to very slowly walk to lunch? <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, then let's pray. Any prayer concerns? Maybe that we can. We'll let our folks go on Facebook here. So thank you for that for being with us. If you were there, um, we'll see you next week. Are you preaching this Sunday? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, actually, um, I we had I wasn't sure about whether I was going to be back. Because uh, my mom had some kind of low numbers with her kidney. Um, I can't remember what those numbers are called, but she was below 20. And once you get at 20 and below, you're in the red zone. Mm -hmm. But she's had kidney disease since she was about my age. Uh -huh. um, so she's held on to it for a long time. But then the numbers, she told me they can't go up. And then they, they went up. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but, you know, she's 84. So remembering all of the, everything about the doctor's visit. <laughs> I don't always remember that. I get in trouble for that sometimes, and I don't remember what the doctor said at my kids' visit. Um, but uh, but anyway, so she was she's doing better. So we decided not to cram that, try to cram that in before school, driving out there, Zoe and I. But um, I'll get out there later this fall. So anyway, long story short, we uh, we I am going to be here this Sunday. So, but we just decided to stick with the preaching schedule as it was. So Pastor Bill will be this week, and then Rally Day, and then I'll be after that. So you'll see him here next week. In, instead of being here for Manna. Yes, yeah. Personal that's right. Yeah. Yeah. What? So yeah, that's not personal. Yeah. Today. Yeah. So, yeah, he had an appointment that he needed to, need to take care of. So, yeah. So, it was Kim or me, rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. <laughs> she got paper, I got scissors. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Any, but any prayers for, from books today or anything that you want to lift up? I think Jerry Rowley was having surgery today. Who is? Jerry Rowley. Oh, Jerry Rowley. Oh, okay. Yeah, today. Okay. I don't know. Did you know that? No, I haven't heard that. Do you know what for? Well, he's got Parkinson's and they're getting ready to put a, a oh. thing in his brain. Oh, wow. This is the first phase of that. Oh, is this new? Is it a new way to deal with Parkinson's? Well, Don Lenardy had something in plan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Yep, gotcha. So that's today, mm. I believe. I believe so. Yeah, we'll check in with them. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, I know Melissa Tippett's. Some of you may know Melissa Tippett's. Um, yeah, and her cancer is is pretty advanced, and not they're not going to do any more with it. They've kind of denied the the trial or the the piece that she was they they were hoping for down in Houston. So that was in the prayer. Purging, I know. But uh, yeah, so keep her in your prayers. Yes, and then um, uh, Janet and Brian Smith mm -hmm. both have some surgery coming up in the next just few days. Yeah. Janet Friday, and Brian, I think on Monday. That's why they don't need uh, uh, this time. Meal it's time. Meal train. Yeah, yeah. Meal right, right. Yeah, yes. yeah, there's a meal train for that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Prayers for that. So yeah, surgeries to go well. Definitely, yeah. And I should have said Melissa Tippett's is Kathy Ford's daughter. Yeah, so, so that. Yeah. And your mother. What's that? Put your mother in your prayer. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, please do as well. So, 
So, um, yeah. Uh, Gloria Crawford's doing really well after her surgery. Uh, yeah. So she had a successful off replacement yesterday. Yeah, that's good too. Yep. Yeah. I had her on my come up on, a, on my nine o'clock like reminder calendar reminder, but I think that was before you made contact. So, yeah, good. Well, let's pray. Good and loving God, we thank you indeed for your word, and we pray uh, that you would live in our hearts and transform us by your your word and your presence. We thank you for this promise in this um, in this world that is so often chaotic and and stressful and confusing and um, we don't always know what to do, but uh, we can always, you always hear us and we can always uh, fall back on your grace and your righteousness and your forgiveness. We pray that you would lead us through that into community and to do, um, act in ways that are life-giving both to us and to our community. We lift up those we've named before you today in their surgeries and health and recovery and um, in their um, living and dying and, and healing. Um, we pray that you would be with uh, your people, uh, give them your comfort, your healing, your strength, and especially uh, uh, and ultimately your promise of life uh, eternally in this life and the life to come. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank Thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Curse. Yeah. <laughs>